Hello, Gaming Guardian here, and we're continuing with another episode of Celine. So, let us just get into it. Alrighty. Oh. Wait, gotta double click. It's load, just to be safe. Okay, now we're good. What he didn't know is what else could be found at those great depths, and at some point in this investigation, things started happening. He started hearing sparse phrases, even though he never turned on TV or radio, and Hope wasn't even home. When he sat in front of the screen once again, trying to connect the dots of in his research, he could feel someone looking at the back of his head. When he turned around, of course, there was no one in the room. Oh, oh, I saw it! Eventually, he taught himself not to turn around. He just got angry, pushing fingers into his temples when the familiar feeling appeared again. He started losing things. Or rather, things would disappear, then appear in the strangest of places. One day he found his pencil in the freezer, stuck in a minced meat briquette. Even when the briquette melted down, he couldn't pull the whole pencil out. All Ethan got was a bloody stump. At this point, he could stop and think of it, but got distracted by the coffee maker and mindlessly shoved the stump into the trash bin. There was something wrong with the shadows, too. They became sharper, thicker, and deeper, and it was the case in the whole apartment. Sometimes they moved. Of course, Ethan only felt like they were moving. It couldn't have been any other way. Ethan didn't really pay attention to any of this, just like he did with that dream he had. All of that seemed very familiar, as he already experienced similar things during the periods of intense work, when his nervous system was exhausted by the workload. There always was a rational explanation, the stress, or those new, much more environmentally friendly light bulbs that Hoped had installed all around the apartment. Besides, it's so easy to dismiss this sort of thing when you're deeply invested into something, and this question really got Ethan involved. Every time he seemed to get it right, his thought was went off, like he was climbing a rock, but a safe ledge suddenly turned slippery, and the next thing he knew, he's at the bottom again. He never faced anything like that during his previous research. There were times he had to spend weeks or months looking for the right answers. Those were the sticky cases, but at least he could always tell how his research was progressing. This time, he was stumbling in his tracks without knowing why, and that was all he could tell. The week was over, but he still had nothing to send back to his contact. Wait, what is this? Whoa. That's weird. In his reply, Ethan asked a couple of questions. Not that he was really interested, just as a courtesy. And that's how their surprisingly exciting email conversation started. With this, Ethan's contact grew to be something more. Something of a friend, maybe? He never asked how Ethan's work was progressing. That this was the question Ethan asked himself, and the answer was never good for him. Of course, he started sleeping badly. Falling asleep was easy, but he woke up many times during the night, sometimes in cold sweat. Ethan could not remember his dreams. That 
night he woke up about three or four times. At first, Ethan was lucky enough to fall asleep almost immediately after he woke up. But at some point, his eyes got open again. This time, the sleep wouldn't come. Ethan felt terribly thirsty. He found no slippers on the usual spot. The noise could wake up hope, so he decided not to look for them, and only regretted it when approaching the kitchen. The floor was bloody cold. So cold that Ethan unconsciously looked down. looking up again he saw a shadow. No doubt the shadow belonged to a woman. A naked woman. Ethan could clearly see the points of her nipples as the shadow turned around. No wonder it's freezing cold in here. The shadow moved slowly along the wall, floating in a rectangular pool filled with moonlight. She was dancing. She was dancing in the humming silence. Humming silence in Ethan's ears was her music. Ethan was watching her, unable to move. He was paralyzed, just like back then in his dream. But he did not remember it. At that moment, he didn't remember anything at all. He couldn't think about anything at all. What is this? He felt an itch in his eyes and the momentary urge to blink. For a fraction of a second, he could only see the thick, viscous darkness, and when he opened his eyes again, there was no shadow anymore. The glowing rectangle shifted its place and now lay on the kitchen floor at Ethan's feet. He could see the cold white light flowing from the seams between the tiles on the floor. For some reason, he took a deep breath and then stepped forward into the rectangle of light. Nothing happened. And what was supposed to happen? What did he really see? Did he really see anything? He walked deeper into the room, much bolder, grabbed the decanter, and started to drink in big, greedy sips. Water streamed down his chin and chest, hitting the tiles on the floor, and poured into the grooves of the seams. No, this wasn't a delusion. The kitchen was completely empty, and the floor felt warm again, and yet it wasn't a delusion. And all of this was begging for a rational explanation. That's why Ethan decided he should talk to Hope in the morning. Something changed. Did you give anyone the apartment keys, you know? Uh, by chance? TV program? Devil is made of clay and tomato soup, just like any human being. Eh? Interview with the devil. It's getting late, and then I come. She serves tomato soup. She used to serve other things, but not anymore. I'm in the tomato soup. They both eat tomato soup. That's how I get in. What? I'm so confused. One, two, and sixty-nine, really. Oh. 
Oh, it actually... Is there dates? Because I saw January 11th. What? Hope froze with a cup at her lips and blinked several times. Maybe you've let someone in? I... I didn't. No! What's with those questions? I feel like someone is visiting our place. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. It's been a while since I started noticing random things vanish, and yesterday I... Hope frowned. She looked at Ethan as if a toad had just popped out of his mouth. Yesterday, you... What? I saw someone in the kitchen last night. Some girl. The deep line in Hope's forehead disappeared. She leaned back in her chair and laughed, throwing her head back. What a show you put on. Okay, fine, I confess. I did steal your cupcake. I mean, am I supposed to? I barely see you lately, so sweet pastries are my best shot to get some fun at night. Damn, I didn't realize you still remembered that cupcakes even exist. It was lying around the fridge for what? Three days? Hope glanced at Ethan, expecting him to start laughing too, yet he still looked very serious. She noticed for the first time that the whites of his eyes were pinkish and full of broken capillaries. Her smile slowly faded. Come on, maybe you've left the keys unattended somewhere? I always leave my keys when I'm in the office. But I'm pretty sure there's no cat burglars among my colleagues. Come to think of it, we should have hired a bunch. Hmm. That'd balance the risk of going broke we have on a monthly basis. You're sure none of your colleagues would play a joke on us? A joke? Good God, Ethan. You look like you're about to eat me alive. Take a bun instead. <laughs> Tastes better, trust me. Hope pulled her chair closer to Ethan and took his hand. Please, hon. Promise me you'll take a break after that project of yours is finished. I mean, one psycho is enough for our family. You promise. Ethan suddenly felt like a total idiot. A tired total idiot. A naked girl in their kitchen. Yeah, sure. He probably overworked to the point he started being delirious at times. Maybe even walked in his sleep. He squeezed Hope's fingers lightly. I promise. Sorry, I'm a moron. I probably stopped seeing the difference between dream and reality. Why don't you call Laura? No, a shrink is the last thing I need right now. My bad, sure, but that'd be just too cruel. What I need is to finish that project. After that, all the gears in my head will fall into place, I give you my word. Oh, don't be like that. I mean, there's no need to start full-fledged therapy anyway. Sometimes, talking through your worries with a professional is all it takes to feel better. At least I shouldn't have pressed you on it. I get that you have enough problems of your own right now. How's it going in your new position? Hope rested her head on his shoulder and shrugged. I'm not fired yet, apparently. Seriously though, I haven't figured it out yet. Those new responsibilities are exciting. But I always feel like I'm ten times slower than I should be. I should probably get ready for a nice, fat piece of overtime by the end of the month. 
Ethan kissed her forehead, closed his eyes, and squeezed the bridge of his nose. Well, I'm not a head of a department as of yet, but I seem to have the same stuff on my plate. Just how do you manage not to pester me with stupid questions? Well, I eat cupcakes at night. You should give it a try. Uh-huh. Hope poked Ethan's cheek a couple of times with her finger. Anyway, don't worry. I didn't give keys to anyone, and the only cat anything I let inside was an actual stray cat. Oh, boom. There you go. Hmm. Now that I think of it, it's been ages since we had any company. Maybe we should. A cat? What cat? Hope sighed and pulled away. Please don't get all worked up, okay? At least I'm being open with you. Don't worry, she didn't wander around. Hope, we've talked this over already. We've talked over what? The fact that what I want doesn't really matter? Damn it, Hope. This is my apartment, and I... And you're staying here alone now? Hope finished her tea in a couple of gulps. I have to go to the office. She stopped at the door, not turning around. Sorry about the cat. She was really skinny, and I felt sorry for her. I also feel sorry for myself, Ethan. Because I'm lonely. Really lonely. This time Ethan felt like an angry idiot. He got up from the table and reached for Hope. Hope, I... Don't. I'll start crying. It'll take time. And I don't have any to spare right now. See you tonight. See you tonight. He didn't know what else to say, so he followed Hope into the hall like a silent shadow. He thought the right words would come to him, but the entrance door closed and he remained silent. Ethan sighed. He regretted his decision to talk about the night episode. He regretted how the talk turned out. He felt sorry for himself and for hope. After all, Ethan was well aware of that. He really didn't spend enough time with her. At first because of the agency project, now because of the question to which he still could not find an answer. It was time to end this. He's going to make some coffee, then he'll open the laptop and write up some answer. It won't be an accurate one, but it's really time to finish that work marathon. After all, he didn't even get paid for this, for his time. Ethan nodded to the closed door and turned around, ready to execute the plan. That's when he saw her. Just for a split second, but damn it, he saw her. A black-haired girl flashed in the doorway of one of the rooms. Not even flashed, but drifted. Like a... Ethan's mouth went dry. Shadow. Of course, there was no one in the room. This has gone too far. Ethan had gone too far, but he couldn't turn back even though he was going to. He didn't even make any coffee. He wanted to get rid of that question, get a good night's sleep, and forget about the whole thing. Forget about the shadow that danced in, this, in his kitchen. Forget about the pale silhouette that wandered through his apartment. Forget that at this very moment someone is looking at the back of his head and that look makes his skin feel as cold as the kitchen floor last night and the hairs one by one stand on end. Ethan clenched his teeth, not with anger, but with some new emotion he couldn't name. Blood hummed in his ears louder and louder. It will all be over after he writes the letter. 
his laptop. His hands were shaking a little and was putting his fingers over the keyboard when his cell phone rang. Ethan flinched. He stared blankly for a few seconds as the vibrating rectangle of glass and plastic crawled across the table. Don't. Do not answer. Don't do it. Suddenly he grabbed the phone and pushed the accept button. Ethan himself didn't know how that happened. He just did it. That's all. The phone pressed tight to it against his ear. He waited for a hoarse, gurgling voice to call his name and tell him to look behind, or what is supposed to happen in cases like this. Ethan? Hope? <laughs> Were you expecting someone else, you dolt? Okay, sorry. I'm super uneasy, and so I'm talking nonsense. Yeah, I'm uneasy too. And that was completely true. I just... Look, am I distracting you right now? You are, and I'm very happy about that. Go on, please. That's great. Hmm, look. It didn't come off well at breakfast, right? Yes. I'm sorry, I'm being awful. No, I'm sorry. Both of us have it hard now, so let's... Let's try not to fight, okay? Great idea. Why don't we go out tonight? Save for groceries? Counts as going out, if you ask me. <laughs> I'll go crazy being cooped up like that. Oh, so that's what's driving me nuts. Should go out for zucchini more often. So what do you say? Okay, we're going to buy all the zucchini tonight. Hope laughed. Ethan suddenly realized that the blood wasn't buzzing in his ears. No one was looking at the back of his head, and if he turned around, he would only see Hope's socks that she'd left on the chair again. Hope. Mm hmm? I love you. I love you too, very much. See you tonight. After finishing the call, he turned around. The socks were resting peacefully on the chair, which meant everything was okay. He went back to the mail, and only then noticed several new letters. Two of them were from his counterpart. Ethan hesitated. He, he had already decided his course of action concerning the question, so there was no harm in taking a look. He won't feel any guilt. After all, he had already done far more than he should have. Of course, he is a lifesaver for those wanting to sell books mentioning historical accuracy, but having no intention to pay for it properly. And so what? He didn't have to do a perfect job for free. Hell, he didn't even work for free. That's what Ethan thought. Then he opened the two letters he got and changed his highly reasonable decision. His counterpart was asking how soon he would get an answer. So this happened, after all. The tone was very polite and apologetic. He wasn't expecting anything, but he really, really needed the help of someone competent. According to the emails, he wasn't doing very well. The poor man had been suffering from insomnia for an insane amount of time, and it seems that he, too, began imagining things. It was as if Ethan saw himself from the outside. He was suddenly felt very sorry for his acquaintance. Of course, he had begun to feel sorry for him earlier, but now Ethan felt a sharp, bitter pity. He realized that if he helped this, his acquaintance, he will help himself, but if he steps back now, what is the value of a specialist who is afraid of a little challenge? As Hope once said, the career ladder is made of thorn. Whoa. Of course, he no longer worked in an office, but professional growth requires twice as much effort if you're self-employed. And besides, Ethan had hope. Hope, who never gives in so easily and forgets her socks on the chair. Hope, who loves him very much. Hope, who will go to the store with him tonight because being cooped up like that can drive one crazy. 
This must be what was happening to his acquaintance right now. Ethan had to help him. Not because of money, but because he could. Because it was the right thing to do. They will both finish their project, and then they will have a good rest. They might even go out for a glass of beer together. So Ethan thought and got back to the question with the newfound strength. The pages of the books did not rustle in the far corner of the room. The shadows weren't wandering in the corridor, and certainly no one looked at the back of his head until the evening. And in the evening, Hope came back. Hope looked up from her magazine and leaned over the armrest. You had a call from the agency? Ethan just got back from the shower. He froze in place, clutching the towel at his waist. Something cold stirred uncomfortably in his stomach. The project. He had completely forgotten about the agency project, and it had been more than two weeks. The deadline was very close. He stared f started for the phone, but Hope just waved her hand lazily. Don't worry, I picked it. What did you tell them? I told them you'd stop eating, sleeping, and loving anything other than work, so go get those files all nice and shiny. Pretty accurate, huh? Yeah. Just don't pick up my phone again, okay? Hope shrugged. Sure. I mean, it was you who asked me to answer the calls in the first place. Yes, I know. When I just started working for them, it was important to let them see I am always in touch. Now that I've passed the probation period, there's no point in piling this on you any longer. Thank you for covering for me. No problem. If you're getting a call and I'm not too lazy to go pick it up, I can watch your back. No, you really shouldn't. The project is complicated. I'd rather deal with it myself. Ethan set rigid. He never considered himself a good liar, but Hope didn't seem to notice anything. She sighed, pretending to be upset, and rolled her eyes. Well now. Guess I'm being fired from an unpaid security position without any honors or compensation. Capitalism sucks. <laughs> Ethan leaned over, tucked a strand of blonde hair behind her ear, and looked into her eyes. His hand remained on Hope's cheek. Your help is very important to me. Hope... Hope's hand went over his. She closed her eyes. I know. I couldn't have done it without you. What else is new? <laughs> they kissed. When Hope pulled away, she looked pleased, a sly smile on her lips. Are we still going to the store? Hmm. I'm not sure. Mm. They reached for each other again, but the phone gave a shrill ring. After the phone call this morning, Ethan turned the silent mode off. Oh well. My city needs me. Ethan briefly pressed his lips to her forehead. Hope sighed and slapped his ass. <laughs> if God existed, he'd really want us to buy some zucchinis. Go and get dressed. Call was from the agency. They needed more details and dates. Ethan went out into the hallway and tried to make it sound as plausible as he could. Yes, he understands that the deadline is very close. No, there was no serious hitches in the work. Yes, he will send everything on time. When the call finally ended, Ethan's neck and face were flushed by this time. He was a lousy liar after all. Ethan had to catch his breath. When he returned to the room, Hope was reaching for his laptop. What are you doing? Hope glanced at him over the shoulder. This time she looked surprised. Nothing special, really. I just wanted to print out some discount coupons. What about it? Ethan left a bunch of files and tabs open. They had nothing to do with the agency project and he didn't want Hope to see them. 
After all, she did know enough about his project to serve as a sort of secretary. About all the projects, except for the one that Ethan shouldn't have taken because it wasn't paid for. Maybe his fears were irrational. Maybe Hope wouldn't blame him. But Ethan felt ashamed and he didn't want to take any chances after what had happened this morning. I have lots of unsaved files in there. Some important information might get lost. Can I print those coupons myself? Ethan felt his heat rise again in his neck and cheeks. Hope stared at him for a few seconds. Ethan couldn't read the expression on her face and that creeped him out. He was ready to hear the reproaches. He even agreed with them in his mind, but Hope simply walked away. Sure. I'll send them to your mail. If that was me, I would be like, is he hiding porn? <laughs> That's literally where my, where my thought would go. They spent most of the way to the store in tense silence. A few times Ethan asked something just to make sure Hope was still talking to him. Hope was, though the answers were dry and she never even attempted to make a joke. It's not that bad, Ethan told himself. It's not that bad at all. If you repeat it again and again, you can buy a l little time, but in the end, the anxiety will prevail. It always does. Ethan's mind quickly figured out the owner was trying to trick it and spat out the chewing gum. At that moment, Ethan got caught in an avalanche of thoughts he didn't want to deal with and couldn't in his current state. Something had to be done, to be said, but what? Maybe he should actually do something after all. Ethan imagined touching Hope's fingers and he immediately saw her pulling the hand back, her eyes glistening, how she opens her mouth to ask the question Ethan had no answer to. They'd have to talk one way or another. Ethan didn't know where to start without burying himself even deeper. He had been thinking about it the whole way but never came up with anything. The huge supermarket on the next block, a place they had long dubbed The Store, was bustling with life despite the rather late hour. As soon as they entered the large glass doors, the tension began to come off on its own. The carts were scarce, but Ethan got them one in exchange for a coupon. Hope gave him a thumbs up with not bad, not bad at all expression on her face. Hope enthusiastically presented a huge, colorful, utterly ludicrous mug, and Ethan immediately agreed they had to buy it. They tried to find a pair for the mug, but a brooding supermarket employee said it was the last one. They were a little disappointed, but well, at least there, that was something. Looking for the mug was the thing that finally did the trick. Now they were huddled together looking for their favorite treats and arguing about which breakfast cereals are the best. That's how it was until they reached the meat department. I'll go pick something out before it's all cleared. Hope nodded absently. She was stuck at one of the big fridges in the middle of the hall. Okay, I'll be waiting for you here. The meat shelves were half empty, as usual, at this hour. Ethan was hoping to find a steak or some minced meat. However, he soon forgot about both. There was a girl standing by one of the shelves. Ethan could, couldn't see her face, only her pale back under a white dress with thin straps and also her disheveled, disheveled dark hair. Ethan's cheek was stung with cold, as if his face was lying on the shelf in one of those refrigerated display cases. Just between the pork ribs and a lone ribeye in a black polystyrene foam tray. Is that her? Ethan took a few uncertain steps forward. Then he backed away, almost knocking over a nice old lady. He couldn't even muster an apology. Grabbed the first thing he came, that came to hand and turned around the nearest row of shelves. He tried not to run. Because it would have looked too stupid, Ethan explained to himself as he reached the end of the row and peered around the corner. 
the girl was still picking out me. Isn't that what you're doing now too, stupid? For sure it is, Ethan agreed with himself. The cold no longer burned his cheek, and the girl, the girl seemed quite ordinary. Except she was dressed too lightly for the current weather, but that was still not considered a crime in any of the states. Ethan smiled to his own thought. Generally speaking, the girl was rather attractive, and her light clothing allowed one to fully appreciate it. Her thin waist passing into a seductive curve of her hips, and beneath the folds of white fabric one could make out her rounded buttocks. Fun. What? what I was asking broccoli or Brussels sprouts. Hope stood still with two colorful plastic bags in her hand, looking at Ethan questioningly. He blinked several times, squinting as if he had just stepped out into the bright light from a darkened room. When did he get back to Hope? Why was he holding a bottle of Thousand Island dressing? I... I don't know. He was a little dizzy. Are you alright? Yeah. Yeah, never mind. I'm sorry, I was just... lost in thought. Hope tried not to look in the direction Ethan had been focusing on for so long. She really tried, but some... Times trying isn't enough, no matter how much effort you put in. At the very moment the dark-haired girl's light white dress was floating away from the meat shelves, she must have finally made her choice. I see. For a moment, Ethan thought both colorful plastic bags were about to slap him in the face. But Hope just smiled and tossed the bags into the cart. Ethan heard them crunch loudly as they hit the bottom. Well... Let's take a bath. Variety is the spice of life. They haven't bought any zucchini. That night had been another dream about the white room. walls were still trembling softly in the cold light. Everything in the room, including the air, was oozing tension, anguishing in anticipation of what was about to happen. And something was really about to happen, no doubt about it. Ethan suddenly realized he was looking at the room from an odd angle. He seemed to be standing on something, but he couldn't feel anything under his feet. No support. He tried to look down, but only saw the shimmering air. He had no legs, and nothing above the missing legs. As if he was not there. Or rather, he was the shimmering air, the chipped ceiling and the walls that were still trembling. He was the red sofa standing a little away from the center, and a couple of unremarkable white doors on opposite walls of the room that were not there the last time. And that should not have been there. Nothing can be done about it now doors have appeared and there is nothing that can be done about it now. The light grew dim, now pulsating noticeably. It was still emanating from the room in its entirety, reflecting from the white walls, but most of all, from the twin bra on the wall between two doors that was not supposed to be. For some reason, Ethan tried to catch the rhythm of the light with his breath, yet he couldn't. There were two figures sitting on the sofa, one fair, the other dark. The dark one came into the room through one of the doors, but Ethan couldn't guess which one. The fair one was Hope. right now or something will happen. The pulse of light became faster. The dark one moved towards Hope and tucked a blonde strand behind her ear. Everything was happening very slowly as if underwater. There was 
was something odd about the Dark One. Something about her was wrong, but Ethan couldn't guess what. She leaned towards Hope's ear and covered her mouth with her hand, and Hope leaned toward her and listened very carefully, as if they had a mutual secret among themselves. Something was about to happen. They both looked at Ethan, even though Ethan wasn't there, or rather he was nowhere, because no white room ever existed. Then one of them smiled. The dark one fingers slid down Hope's chin, a soft, rounded line. They were no longer looking at Ethan, only each other, very closely, and were slowly inhaling the light. Dark one stroke Hope's cheek, and there was no light left between their ajar lips as they collided. Ethan saw drops of saliva glistening on their lips. The dark one licked her lips and raised her tongue to make space for a long black snake as it got out of her mouth. The snake swayed, tasted the air with its own tongue, and reached out to Hope. Hope closed her eyes. Now the snake was stroking her cheek long and black, over and over again in a spiral, always in a spiral. Hope reached for the band that covered her eyes, and the dark girl reached for her hand, and their fingers intertwined, and the light between their lips melted, as it always happens at sunset. Yet there was no snake, it was just a black ribbon, a poisonous ribbon covered in scales. The pulse of the room became faster. One of the lamps came into an eclipse. She has a number of faces. That's a clue. The bodies of two girls merged on the red sofa, and his own flesh was shaking and shrinking. Ligaments, valves, bones, vessels, and places where they came very close to the shabby red upholstery. His heart rate became faster. 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 And then something happened. Ethan woke up. His breath was bubbling in his throat. After that, Ethan loomed over the sink and was looking at himself in a small rectangular mirror for quite a while. At some point, his lips started trembling. Ethan did not wait to see where they were. this was going. He spat into the sink, let the water in for a while, then he turned the lights off. to make the tomato soup. At some point, they had to remove her fingernail, an accident at the factory. She got lost. It's legal, but it's painful still. Devil comes from the, the little cracks they don't tell you at school. Huh? No time to cook? We've got an answer on the shelf. Tomato soup. Made with fresh tomatoes and... And... I wish you'd never been born. Okay! stop here and I I don't know how much more of this we will do it depends on how far this goes um, 
there's some content in this that I'm not comfortable showing on my channel, and so that's why I have been censoring some things. So, um, yeah. So until next time, <laughs> bye.